Hi there, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. When I interview people, I love to ask them what their one chart would be, and that is, if you had one chart, just one chart, besides just a regular chart of the S&P 500, to give you a good read on the overall market environment, what would it be and why? So here's my one chart for today. So my one chart for today is a chart of the IWM, the iShares Russell 2000 ETF. Now at the bottom, we have the relative performance of the IWM versus the S&P 500 and the long-term underperformance of small caps versus large caps. Hopefully is not a surprise to everyone. This phenomenon of large cap, really mega cap technology, consumer discretionary, uh, communication services, healthcare and others, uh, you know, dwarfing the performance of small caps has been a, a, an ongoing issue. It's been a chronic issue. This is not something that's just new to uh, the, uh, the downturn, but if you look, the underperformance really accelerated uh, mid-February to mid-March. So as the market, you know, sort of fell off a cliff, small cap led the way down for sure. What's happened since then is you had this period of stability. And from mid-March to mid-April, you actually have this flat relative performance where small caps and large caps are actually both recovering in a pretty, pretty decent clip. Since then, you've just started to see a relative strength breakout. So the relative strength of the IWM actually made a new uh, sort of six-week uh, high which again, on its own, is just the beginning. It's not really telling you dramatic outperformance, but it's just starting to improve. It's, it's stronger rather than weaker. So having said that though, I think the chart of the IWM in terms of its price is what's most important here. So while the S&P 500 is, is sort of up here, testing the 61.8% uh, resistance Fibonacci level, um, it's also nearer to its 200-day uh, moving average, which on the S&P 500 is right around 3,000. Um, so a, a big round number. The uh, small cap index is actually a little further down. So the IWM is actually uh, broke above its 50% retracement, but came back. And now it's sitting right around its 38.2% retracement. That's a retracement of the February to March sell-off. So if you buy into the market recovery, things are going to continue to get better. The, the economy, you know, the, the um, market's uh, reopening, uh, the world getting better. Uh, stocks are going to continue to appreciate then this chart should continue to make higher highs and higher lows. And that's the pattern you've seen since mid-March, right? You had the low uh, third week in March, you then had uh, the rally and then the pullback into the first week in April. Then you've had this continued pattern of higher highs and higher lows. And the high last week, uh, last week in April, uh, was, was uh, up here just above 137. And then we pulled back right back to that 38.2% uh, level. So one of two things is gonna happen, either this trend continues, this short-term tactical uptrend continues. You continue this pattern of higher highs and higher lows, in which case I think you have to believe that the market recovers further from here. If that happens, I would not be surprised to see the S&P break above 3,000 on its way to previous highs, 3,400 plus. Or we start to break down, we start to make a lower high, we make a lower swing low, right? We break below 122, which would be the, the low from the first week in May. We break below trend line support using the lows from late March and early April. And so if those things happen, and if the uh, IWM breaks below that 38.2% retracement level, I think then you have to believe that the market could get weaker from here. And I would argue based on what has happened, right, where the market starts to get bad, people flee to the big cap tech sort of safety trade, the MAGA trade or the FANG trade. Um, you know, I think you will see a breakdown in small caps before you'll likely see a, a breakdown in the S&P 500, meaning the IWM would likely break down through the 38.2% level, break down through trend line support, break back down below its 50-day moving average, while the S&P still might maintain, uh, you know, more of a stable sort of equilibrium because people will rotate away from the high beta speculative small cap trade back into sort of the big cap uh, blue chip defensives that'll make the S&P remain uh, fairly strong. The, the last thing you sell is your Apple and Microsoft and all those things that have been doing so well. So my one chart for today is the IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF. And again, I'm seeing a short-term tactical uptrend, which again, I've, I've been reminding my viewers that as long as that pattern of higher highs and higher lows continues, you have to you know, at least be, be expecting further upside with stocks. But once that pattern breaks, and I think with the IWM, we have a clear line in the sand as to where that might happen. Really a break below 122 would confirm more downside for stocks, a breakdown in relative strength. And I would argue uh, a follow through from the S&P 500 uh, uh, following the, uh, the small cap index further down. This is Dave Keller with Market Misbehavior. Be safe. Have a great day.